here working with the Harvard University Cavity Rain Down Spectrometer. It's an instrument that measures greenhouse concentrations, and particularly uh, we make measurements of CO2, CO, and methane. So at the core of our instrument, we have a Picaro analyzer. This instrument uses the cavity ring down spectroscopy technique to measure the concentrations of the greenhouse gases, uh, CO2, CO, and methane. Essentially, what happens in this technique is that we inject light of a particular frequency into a cavity that consists of a set of three mirrors that are highly reflective. Once we inject the light in, into the cavity, the intensity builds up and at one point we shut off the light into the cavity and we just watch it bounce from uh, mirror to mirror until it decays exponentially. And what we're actually measuring is the amount of time it takes for this light to decay. In the absence of absorbers, this light can actually bounce many times. Once an absorber is introduced into the cavity, for example, CO2, CO, or methane, then that light is gonna start decaying much faster. Each molecule has its own fingerprint in the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, in our case, we're looking at frequencies that are in the near infrared. And what we do with this uh, cavity ring down technique is that we scan different frequencies within absorption features of each molecule. And the goal is to essentially reconstruct what the spectrum looks like in order to derive concentrations as a function of, of absorption. Once we recreate the absorption spectrum of the molecule based on information we get from the ring down times, we can transfer that information into concentrations. And such transfer happens uh, with the use of mathematical formulas that are based on physical principles that allow us to relate absorption levels to concentration levels. As delivered from Picaro, the instrument wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be happy operating in this environment at low pressure and cold temperature. So we remove it from the original housing, repackage it, uh, and put it into a tubular pressure vessel, which keeps it at one atmosphere and also uh, helps to warm it up more quickly. In addition uh, to the pressure vessel in, the, in this box, we have um, flight computer and some additional data logging capacity for housekeeping signals. We have temperature controllers, pressure control, basically the electronics that, that run the instrument. So to support the uh, function of this instrument, we, we have a couple other boxes. This unit here is a gas deck or a calibration system. We have two eight liter bottles in there with calibration gas um, that we deliver to the instrument instead of the sample air for one to two minutes each every half an hour. And this serves to give us a real measure of the performance of the instrument under the flight conditions. A lot of times you would do a calibration on the ground and and I'm just talking about a general instrument, not this one in particular. Um, and then be concerned that in flight, under different pressure and temperature conditions, that, the, uh, that what you measure might actually be different. So in-flight calibrations give you a good deal of confidence that what you're seeing in the instrument um, is traceable to known standards from a source that's traceable to worldwide standards. way we have air moving through the system is we have a, a probe on the bottom of the fairing that is now forward facing. Air comes in that, goes through a Nafion dryer which removes water vapor. Um, 
and then enters the pump and gets pressurized up to about 500 torr. That's provided to the inlet of the original uh, Picaro instrument, which uh, and gas that's in excess of what's required there is diverted out of bypass. So we give it a nice constant inlet pressure regardless of altitude, um, which helps the instrument um, remain stable and happy. The sample also goes through uh, additional step of water removal which is a tube that goes through a dry ice um, section that removes a small amount of remaining water vapor that's not removed at the front end so this instrument also measures water vapor but not really well enough for the stratosphere and so rather than need to make a correction for water vapor um, we just remove it all together and that helps with the precision of some of the other measurements as well so. One of the goals of the Atrix campaign is to understand the composition in the stratosphere, particularly how air enters from the troposphere into the stratosphere. Our group's contribution to the Atrix project is to provide measurements of greenhouse gases. And these are gases that are produced at the surface and are a result of human activity. So our interest is to see not only how much of those gases are emitted, but how much of those gases make it into the stratosphere uh, through the triple pause layer, which is what this project is focusing on. We're just one of many teams who are contributing to different pieces of such puzzle where by combining all the different parts or all the different measurements that we are making during the campaign, we should be able to have an attempt at trying to answer some of the questions that we're after.